Ron Aldana here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with the live Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about something that gets asked quite a bit, especially with newbies, but also even with veterans. And that is, should I be branding myself or I should, should I be branding the company? What's the smart way to go about doing this? Should I brand my own brand, my own personal identity, or should I be branding the company? What's smart, what's not? Very good question, I'm glad you asked. So let's dive into this. First off, what is branding? What is branding? Well, to make things real simple, branding is the feeling you have when you think about a particular company, a particular brand. It's the in instantaneous feeling you have. It's the meaning attached to your company, your brand. So the first thing they think about, the first thing they feel, the immediate association, what is it? It's the knee jerk reaction. That's the brand. So question it, a few examples. What's the first thing you think about? What's the first thing you feel when you think of McDonald's? Now, some of you, it might be getting sick. It might be being overweight. It might be unhealthy. For some of you, it might be consistency. The same thing, every single store in every single state in every single country. Consistency might be the association or it might be bright yellow walls in the bright you know, environment with a kitty zone that's kitty friendly, right? What's the association you have personally about McDonald's? That's the brand identity in your heart, in your mind for that brand. And notice everyone's gonna have a little bit different opinion, a little bit different brand association. And it's the cumulative effect of that reputation, of that association, of that feeling, of that meaning that builds the overall brand brand identity in the marketplace. So I see Anthony says arches, right? So arches can mean something different for two different people, let alone a thousand different people. But again, it's the cumulative effect of that identity, that feeling, that association that creates your branding your reputation in the marketplace. Let's do another example. How about uh, Nordstrom's? What's the first thing you think about? What's the first thing you feel when you think about Nordstrom as a brand? For some of you, it might be excellent customer service, going above and beyond the call of duty. It might be quality. It might, it might be brand names. It might be you know more expensive or for the affluent or something like that, right? For others of you, it might be something different depending on your experience with Nordstrom's. So again, it's the meaning, it's the feeling attached to who you are. We had another uh, shout out from Al Rodriguez. Thank you, Al. He said, quality, uh, mimosa, given away, <laughs> right? So that was uh, Anthony Nelson. He said, mimosa, given away. I'm not exactly sure. Is that like you're giving away a drink, mimosa? I know that's a drink. Uh, oh, they give you mimosas at Nordstrom's. Okay. I live in Canada, so uh, we don't really have Nordstrom's where I'm at. So I've been there in there once, but I've never had a mimosa pass to me. So I don't have that association. So notice a difference in experience because he's been in a Nordstrom where he got a mimosa given to him. I've never had that. So I don't have that brand experience, right? So how cool is that? You go to a store and you get a mimosa. It's this like luxury five-star experience, right? That's what they're trying to cultivate. So notice that creates a feeling, an association, an experience. And the more you can make that consistent among the population, especially your target audience, the more you fortify your brand identity as such. What about Walmart? What's the first thing that comes to mind? What's the first feeling you have when you think about Walmart? Is it quality? Is it five-star experience? Probably not, right? It's on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's, it's bright lights, right? It's big. It's everything's on the cheap. You know, it's very low income type of clientele generally, right? It's economy class, um, get the best prices, that sort of thing, right? So again, not that it's necessarily bad or good. It's just a different brand identity. And you're going to target a different audience, a different clientele. Wouldn't you agree that's a different clientele than the Nordstrom's clientele, right? 
because they're targeting a different clientele, a more affluent clientele that appreciates higher quality, that appreciates that five-star experience, that has the money to be able to give themselves that gift because they feel like, hey, I'm worth it. I've worked hard. I'm worth this experience. It's worth the extra money. Different experience, different brand, different feeling, different association attached. You guys with me? I heard some other shout outs. Uh, Anthony says China imported goods, right? Lots of Chinese imported goods with Walmart. Uh, Michael Troch said struggle with all this the next time as a bilingual loan officer, uh, as a bilingual loan officer. Do I market uh, being bilingual or do I or company? Or try to do both. Well, again, you're going to have a hard time doing both. If you're marketing to uh, Spanish, for example, if you speak Spanish, if you're marketing to the Spanish, that's a very different message, a de very different brand than if you're marketing to anybody and everybody. If anybody and everybody is your prospective client, no one will be your customer. No one will be your client because you're too watered down. One of the reasons why Trump was so successful, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm no analyst, political analyst, but he's very polarizing in the sense that you either love them or hate them. And the people who love them, absolutely love them. The people who hate them, absolutely hate them. So he gets people very polarized. You're either turning, getting the person to turn up the volume or change the channel. And that's precisely what you want to do. You want to get people to increase the volume or change the channel. You don't want them to be lukewarm, like, who's that? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't really know. He's kind of like blase, boring. I don't know. He's kind of like, I don't even know what he stands for. Like, uh, you know, he, he's kind of wishy-washy. No, that doesn't work. You've got to have a powerful, potent brand where everyone either loves you or hates you. No in between. That's exactly the kind of brand you want. You are either love Apple or you hate Apple. Generally speaking, there's no in between. You either... You know, it's look at Harley Davidson. People who love Harley Davidson absolutely love Harley Davidson. They're not just customers. They're like disciples. They're evangelists. It's part of their identity. They wear the Harley Davidson shirt. They wear the Harley Davidson vest. They wear the Harley Davidson skull cap. I mean, it's like the, the shades, the shoes, the panties, you name it, right? It's like it, they take it on as their identity. Some people even have Apple, um, Apple, you know, branding on their skin where they literally put it on ink on their skin with a tattoo. Same thing with Harley. So you want to get that kind of uh, powerful branding, not necessarily where they're going to tattoo their brand on your skin, but you've tattooed yourself on their hearts from the standpoint of they love you. They're passionate about the difference you make, how you show up, the excellence that you bring to the table and how congruent you are throughout all your branding from your website to how you communicate in person to how you com communicate in the on email by how you show up in terms of your environment when they come to your office. It's all congruent. The whole experience is congruent all the way through. If you're uh, a brand that's all about playfulness, your emails are playful. Your environment in your office is playful. Your website is playful. How you dress is playful, right? The whole thing is congruent all the way through. That's how you build a solid, brilliant, brand. You've got to be consistent and congruent. Does that make sense, guys? So now that we beat that dead horse talking about what the brand is, let's actually answer the real question around what we're talking about today, which is, do you build your own brand or do you build your company brand? Well, that really necessitates asking a question before that, which is what really matters? What really matters when it comes to the brand? I mean, are people doing business with you because of the logo you have? Are two people doing business with you because of the brand name of your company? Chances are absolutely not. They're working with you because of how you show up, because of how you communicate, because of your integrity, your excellence, your attention to detail, your follow through, your passion, the amount you care about the client. They come to you. They work with you because of you, because of how you show up. Wouldn't you agree? I don't know what happened with my video. It looks like I lost my video. It's kind of weird. Um, hopefully that fixes itself. But uh, <laughs> I just noticed my video just went blank. Hit me up uh, on the commentary if you're seeing black on the uh, if you're seeing a blank screen right now, because I'm curious to know if uh, you can actually see the screen or is everything blank. 
hit me up, guys. I want to. I know you guys are watching right now. Hit me up. Can you see me, or are you seeing a blank screen? Just hit me up with a comment because right now I'm in question mark land. Okay, cool. So it's cool for you. Beautiful, excellent. I just wanted to make sure because on my end it's literally a blank black screen. So I'm glad you guys are seeing what you need to be seeing. All right. So uh, from that standpoint, let's move on now. You guys understand now what the brand is. You understand that it doesn't mean jack about the company. You are the brand. People work with you. Realtors work with you. Clients work with you because of you, not because of your logo, period, right? So you guys all get that. So now let's talk about some common mistakes that people have when it comes to uh, their branding in general and their marketing strategy in particular as it relates to their branding. So the first mistake I see time and time again, I've been in this game 14 years, coaching mortgage pros to success for 14 years. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen people make this mistake. It's heartbreaking because frankly, they're leaving a shit ton of money on the table over and over and over again to the tune of literally hundreds of thousands, sometimes even millions of dollars because they are not mindful of this one point I'm about to give you. And it's this. Using the company CRM instead of using your own CRM that you pay for. Chances are, with the amount watching and listening right now, a good 50%, maybe even 60, maybe even 70% of you are using your company provided CRM because, of course, the company, it behooves them to sell you on the bullshit that it's in your best interest to use their CRM because they don't want you to have independence. They don't want you to be portable. They don't want you to be able to pick up and go at will. If you if they don't cut the mustard, if they don't follow through, if they don't deliver first class in operations to help you succeed or whatever the case may be, they don't want you to be able to be portable. They want you to be stuck to them like super glue and they want a massive pain of disconnect. They want to make it as painful as possible for you to go elsewhere. Let's be real. And I'm not saying that to say it's wrong. I'm saying it because it's the truth. It just is. That's their prerogative. They're in the prerogative of having you stay in the game with them and producing with them as long as possible, as much as possible. They're in the retention game. They're in the talent attraction game and the talent retention game. Now, let's... On the flip side, look at what your prerogatives are. Your prerogative is you want, to real, you want to build a real business, a thriving business that sets you free, that you don't serve but serves you, that liberates you, that gives you an extraordinary lifestyle for yourself and your family, that allows you to have independence and sustainable longevity in this business. True? Now, let me ask you this. If I was to pitch you on the idea of building a house on my property, but at the end of the day, that house is in my title, not yours. Would you go for that? You'd be like, hell no. If I'm going to spend the time and energy and money building a house, I'm going to put it on my own title, on my own property, because that's just smart business. You're not going to go through the expense of all that only to have someone else be on title. But that's precisely what you're doing if you have a CRM and you're building marketing campaigns within that CRM that are designed to monetize that list, that database. And you don't have ownership of it because if you decide to jump ship somewhere else, guess what? You just left the house you just built on someone else's title, on someone else's property. How smart is that? It ain't smart. And I can't tell you how many people do it time and time again. Don't do that, friends. Get your own freaking CRM. We're talking 15, 50 bucks, maybe 100 bucks a month max. It's chump change. Get your own CRM. Now, if you're concerned about compliance, just make the stuff you send out unbranded. If you're at a bank and you're really concerned about compliance, make your stuff completely unbranded. Just have the stuff you, that you send out be generic stuff, not about rates or products. So what we do is we actually set up automated email campaigns for our clients that drip on your prospects, clients, and realtors while, they, while you sleep on autopilot. Just set it and forget it. It sends out video emails so that it's compelling because most people don't want to read emails anymore. They just want to click and watch. And it drips on them once a week on financial literacy, home maintenance for the prospects and clients, you know, a, a little bit of mortgage and real estate related stuff, but mostly financial literacy type content. And then for realtors, we talk about stuff they actually care about, like how to get more listings, how to sell them faster for top dollar, how to generate more buyer leads, how to get more repeat and referral business. 
And again, it's once a week. So it's stuff they actually care about once a week, little bite-sized morsels to build your brand, to add value, to cultivate that relationship. And you can either make it branded or unbranded. You could have it with the company logo or you could just have it your, your beautiful or handsome mugshot with your contact info. No branding whatsoever. No mention of the company whatsoever. Okay. So you have two ways you can go. Now, some might say, well, it's easier to ask for, per for forgiveness than permission. That might be your style. You might also be very, you know, a compliant type of personality. In the disc profile, you'd be a high C, in which case you probably want to send everything to compliance. That's cool. Just understand that it's going to take longer to get it through compliance. And at the end of the day, you want it in your own CRM regardless. But Dorn, I want it to be integrated with Encompass. And my company one is in integrated with Encompass. Well, then use two. Use the one through the company for the integration to Encompass and then have a long-term drip, a long-term nurture campaign that's your own CRM that you pay for that allows you to be portable for all the long-term nurture drip, like the weekly video tips, for example. Okay, So you could do both. That's an option too. The big idea is you need to have your own CRM. So you're portable and you have control and ownership of the single most valuable asset in your business, which is the database and most importantly, the marketing campaigns that are designed to help you monetize that database. That's what's of real value. Anyone can export an Excel spreadsheet from their database, their company CRM before they leave to another company, but it's not the list that makes you money, friends. It's the marketing campaigns that make you money. Just having a list doesn't make you jack. It's the marketing campaigns that make you money. Does that make sense, guys? So with that being said, I'm getting some comments here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, everyone's saying, cool. You guys will be able to see me. Awesome. Uh, Dane says, great analogy. Cool. So I'm glad you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. Let's talk more about some other topics that are important. The next thing I want to talk about in terms of mistakes that people often make is not setting yourself up to be portable. We already talked about that. So anything and everything that you do in your marketing, you want to be asking yourself, if I jump ship to a new company, am I going to be able to be portable with this? And if at all possible, you want the answer to be yes. So if you're building assets, marketing systems that work while you're not working, that undergird the foundation of your business, you want those to be portable, if at all possible. And the CRM is a prime example. OK, so we've kind of already beat that one to death. So let's talk about another mistake, another mistake that uh, you wanna be considering and be cognizant of. I got this uh, comment that just came through from Al. He said, build you ink. I love that, Al. Build you ink. You are the brand, so you gotta build it. And you can't be building on a, someone else's title. It's gotta be on your title. You gotta have ownership of it, control over it. So the third mistake to be cognizant of and avoid is branding doesn't mean jack if you're not generating quality leads that convert. Let me repeat that. Branding for the sake of branding doesn't do jack diddly squat with it for you or with you unless and until you actually generate quality leads that convert. I can't tell you how many clients I see that spend all kinds of money on useless branding companies that go and will build their brand, so to speak, but don't actually do anything from a practical, strategic campaign standpoint to generate leads for them. They say, well, when you build your brand, you're going to get leads by default. That's bullshit. If, when you do practical, effective lead generation activities through various different practical methods, whether it be online or offline, you're going to get leads. And then the branding is done through that lead generation activity. You don't do branding and then hope, wish and pray you're going to get leads. That's not how if you want to work your, your business smart as opposed to hard, if you want to do it the smart way as opposed to just being out there spinning your wheels, wasting time, hoping, wishing, and praying you're gonna get some payoff from your quote unquote branding investment, then you've actually gotta set up lead generation systems. You've gotta get lead generation systems that feed your pipeline with actual leads, apps, and closings. Cause you can't bring branding to the bank. You can't pay your mortgage with branding. Oh, I'm short on cash today, uh, but I have some branding equity. Can I pay my mortgage with branding? They're going to be like, who the hell are you and what are you smoking, right? <laughs> you can't pay Jack with branding. You pay your mortgage with cash. And in order to get cash, you need clients. In order to get clients, you need apps. In order to get apps, you need leads. So put branding in its proper perspective. 
Branding happens automatically when you do the lead generation and the lead conversion process properly. That should be secondary. The first and foremost priority in your business needs to be lead gen. Otherwise, you're putting the cart ahead of the horse. It doesn't work. That's working hard as opposed to working smart. You guys with me on that? Cool, guys. So that's the third thing. The fourth mistake you want to avoid when it comes to branding is not having a unique selling proposition. You might say, well, my branding is I have excellent customer service. Well, who cares? Everyone expects you to have excellent customer service. That's a minimum expectation to be in the game, friends. I mean, that's what your clients expect. That's what your realtors expect. Well, I got more than that. I've got great rates and excellent customer service. Well, woohoo! again, minimum expectation. Everyone expects you to have competitive rates and excellent customer service. So notice how all that is just plain Jane vanilla. It's snoring boring. It's like, who cares? Why is someone going to do business with you just because you're doing the minimum expectation? Right? So it's mission critical. If you want to build a brilliant brand that you actually have something compelling. Like one of the things that's unique about what we do, it, the reason why we have such a phenomenal uh, clientele base and why people come to us as opposed to our competitors is because we don't get you doing bullshit like cold calling realtors doing it the hard way because that's doing it the hard way. That has you just spinning your wheels, throwing yogurt to the fan, hoping something sticks. And so notice how that's a compelling value proposition. It's called building a thriving business, doing what you love without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. Notice how that's a compelling hook. It's a compelling value prop. You've got to create a compelling value proposition that makes you stand out from the clutter. And then you attach that to your brand and it's like pouring gasoline on the fire. You supercharge it. It's like you inject it with steroids, baby. All of a sudden it's got muscle, it's got meaning, it's got power, it's got impact. That's what you want with your brand. If you're boring, then just building more branding of being boring ain't gonna help you. All that does if you spend more money on marketing is increase the speed at which people find out you suck and that you're boring. Who cares, right? <laughs> what good is that going to do if you just increase the rate at which, at which people find out you're boring? I've never heard of anyone being sold into doing a business with anybody by being bored, right? doesn't happen. You've got to fascinate. You're in the fascination business. You're in the value creation business. You're in the unique value proposition business. We got a comment from Dane. He said, branding a business uh, versus yourself doesn't happen overnight. It's hard and it requires repetition. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be hard. It's certainly not easy. So yeah, I would concur with that. It's simple, but not easy. And it does take repetition. How do you build a reputation? You don't build a reputation in a day. You build a reputation through repetition. Hey, that's kind of like a tweetable right there. You build your reputation through repetition consistency day in and day out. It's one of the reasons why I do this Facebook Live every Friday. It's like Doran, man, he shows up. Every Friday he's showing up. Every Friday he's consistent, man. That dog is consistent. He just shows up. He delivers value. He's got passion. He's got relevant points. He's adding value in practical ways and he's showing up. He's in the game. Repetition, 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 repetition. I may not be the funniest guy. I may not be you know, the guy that's going to crack the best jokes, but you got to be knowing you show up on Friday, you're going to get something of value. You're going to get something that you can actually put into practice that's going to push the needle on profit and performance. You got to be knowing I'm going to light your fire with something that will get you ignited and excited at a higher level, stretching and reaching for higher ground. Wouldn't you guys agree? Repetition, repetition, repetition. You got to be consistent. So let's talk about another mistake that people often make, and that's not having a unique selling proposition for your realtors. See, that's a separate clientele base. Those are your referral partners. So you can have a great unique selling proposition for your clients, but if you're weak on what you bring into the table that really you know, strikes a nerve for your realtors, you're gonna fall flat. They're gonna be not giving you the time of day. They're gonna hang up the phone. They're gonna give you all kind of BS saying, oh, I'm already with somebody. I'm already good. No, thank you. Thanks, but no thanks. And you're going to show up on all these open houses and you're going to be smiling and down and you're going to get jacked at least squat. You might make some friends, but you're not, you won't make real solid partnerships because you don't have anything for them to bite their teeth into. They actually care about that's going to have them switch whoever lender they have right now on their speed dial to you. And you end up just being the last resort loan officer that they call as a last resort 
after they call all the other loan officers who can't get a deal done and you get all the last resort deals trying to resurrect the dead. Does this sound familiar? <laughs> I know some of you, this is sounding rather intimate, like you're intimately acquainted with the scenario, right? Well, this is because you don't have a compelling, unique value proposition. And you're wondering why. Well, wonder no longer, friend, is because your unique value proposition is weak at best or non-existent at worst. So that's a key element you got to level up on with your branding is what makes you, you know, unique. Now you might be thinking, well, Dorn, I, I got some great, you know, value props, but my operations team ain't cutting the mustard. My operations team keeps fumbling these deals and it's costing you my reputation. It's costing you my brand. Well, why the hell are you with that company then is my question. Why are you settling for second best? Why are you putting your brand, your reputation, your livelihood and your family's livelihood at risk by rolling with chumps? If you want to be a champ, you can't afford to roll with chumps. So why are you sticking with chumps? Well, I'm loyal, Doran. Well, how's that working for you so far? You're going to put your family at risk and your livelihood at risk because you're loyal. How's that working for you so far? Doesn't it make sense if you want to create a champion life that you only roll with the champs and you settle for nothing less than champs? Come on now. Loyalty is overrated if you're going to settle for second best. My mantra is this, superstars only. I will only roll with superstars. When it, whether it comes to referral partners, whether it comes to employees, staff, team members, whether it comes to friends, I only roll with superstars. I will never, never settle for anything less than superstars. I want to roll with people who elevate me. I want to roll with people who bring life to me. I want to roll with people that bring the best out of me. I want to roll with people that inspire greatness out of me. And if you're settling for second best, that's on you, not them. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. You're welcome. <laughs> got to love how I give you a nice proverbial kick in the ass. You're welcome. I'm here for you. <laughs> so you got you to be knowing you can count on Dr. D to give you the real deal every week. Every week, I'm not going to sugarcoat code nothing. I'm going to give you exactly what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And that's why you guys tune in for real, because you don't want to hear any bullshit. You want to get the real deal that's going to set you free. Agreed? All right. Let's talk about the last mistake I often see people make. Not sweating the small stuff. We just talked about that with settling for a you know, substandard team, substandard operations team. You can't settle. You can't settle for mediocrity in anything in life. I was actually making the bed this morning after I had a shower. My, my wife said, there's D bringing his best every morning, making that bed. The way I make a bed is unlike anyone else may, probably makes a bed. Like very few people make a bed. When I make a bed, it's like a Zen like, you know, exercise. I make a bed like, you know, it's going to be advertised on a billboard. This is how Doran rolls, right? Like, this is an extension of who I am. This is an extension of my of Doran's excellence. This is an extension of Doran's philosophy for living. This is an extension of the mark of excellence that Doran has in anything and everything he does. Some of you, you don't even make your bed and you're wondering why your business isn't rocking. Well, start with the little things. There was a book that was written that says, don't, don't, wet the, don't sweat the small stuff. Not don't wet the small stuff, but don't sweat the small stuff. Screw that. That's bullshit. Don't sweat this. Don't wet this. Don't can't even talk anymore. <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff. That's called a mediocre life. Don't sweat the small stuff. That's how the whole thing unravels. Don't sweat the small stuff. That's called you going through life, just blundering through life, leaving a wake of mediocrity. And you wonder why that ain't working. I'll tell you why, because you're not sweating the small stuff. You want to build a brilliant brand. Everything you do needs to be excellent. That doesn't mean you need to do everything. It means the stuff you love doing, do that with excellence. The stuff you don't like doing, the mundane minutia, delegate it with excellence. Bring on top talent that can do that even better than you can with excellence. I'm not saying do everything with excellence. I'm saying everything you choose to do that you love doing, that's in your area of greatness, where you're working in your strengths, in your unique ability, do that with excellence. But start with the little things. Start with the, just the little things, like making your bed with excellence. Everything just crisp and tight and on point, where you can look back at it and say, man, that is a beautiful sight to behold. Look at that bed. Man, I'm about to get lucky tonight the way I make that bed. <laughs> right? It's like you just bring, it's like a zen-like exercise where you bring 
conscious intention to it. Doesn't that inspire you to live a life where everything you do, you bring conscious intention to it, where you have a mark of excellence. That's the kind of brand you want to build. That's what I would call a brilliant brand. Wouldn't you agree? So that's all I have today, my friends, for the topic of what to do with your brand. Do you brand yourself or do you brand your company? What's smart, what's not? I've talked about some of the things you want to avoid, some of the blunders, the pitfalls. I've talked about some of the mindsets, the philosophies, the distinctions you want to have to build a portable brand, a brilliant brand, a brand of excellence to anchor in people's minds, hearts, and souls that you are the only logical choice. You can mess with those chumps or you can roll with the champ. There's no in between. And the people who get it, they're going to roll with you because they won't settle for second best. But you want to bring that to life and reality. Talk is cheap. Anyone can say, hey, I'm the champ. Everyone wants to be a champion. Very few people are willing to do what it takes to become a champion. Why? Because it looks like hard work, baby. It looks like hard work. It wears overalls and looks like hard work because it is hard work. But it's worth it. It's worth it. If success was easy, everyone would be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why? Because it takes something. It takes something to be a champion, but it's worth it. You can look at yourself in the eyes in the mirror and say, hey, I respect you. I respect you because of the price you pay every day to bring excellence to everything you do, to be a man or woman of integrity, to be a man or woman who truly cares about the outcome, the outcome of what you do every day to serve people, whether it be serving people as a mother, serving people as a father, serving people as a husband, serving people as a wife, serving people as a leader, serving people as a manager, serving people to get them into their dream home. See, you make a difference. You matter. What you do makes a difference. But if you settle for second best, if you settle for mediocrity, if you get complacent, if you neglect, if you start to drift, if you start to coddle your comfort zone, if you care more about your comfort than you do about conquering, you will settle. It will corrode your character. It will corrode your attention to detail. Next thing you know, you end up broke or broke as a joke and you're wondering why. Or you're just not happy because you're not growing. You're drifting. You're not driving. You're settling. You're growing moss. You're, you're sitting on your laurels. You, you're thinking about the victories of yesterday instead of climbing up new mountains to gain new summit experiences and the thrill of victory for tomorrow. You're sliding down old mountains instead of climbing up new ones. Notice all of this is about philosophy. It's about mindset. It's about your own success culture within your own head. And the more you build that muscle, the more you have the wisdom, the discernment, the passion, the standards of excellence to build a brilliant brand. It all starts from within. When you have a standard of excellence from within, it bursts forth into your world. It bursts forth into everything you put your attention to, everything you put your focus on, your energies flow towards that and results show as a result of that. It comes from you. You are the source of your own brilliant brand. But it doesn't happen through tactics. It doesn't happen through a campaign. It doesn't happen through a funnel. It doesn't happen through cookie cutter crap sent through the company. It comes from your standard of excellence and your vision for the future and your identity of being someone who brings excellence. You see yourself as someone who has a standard for excellence. You have an absolute standard of integrity and you will not settle. That is the anchor. That's the foundation from which you build a brilliant brand. So I hope you guys have got some value from this conversation. Thanks for hanging with me. This is Doran Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach, coming at you from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. If you want to learn more about how we can help you create breakthroughs, if you want to learn more about how we can help you build your brilliant brand, if you want to learn more about what it's going to take to take you from where you are to where you want to be, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching session with either me or one of um, our staff by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That give you an opportunity to get with us on a 60 minute breakthrough coaching call. I promise you this, regardless of the outcome of that call, you're going to leave with massive clarity, massive clarity on where you're at, where you want to be, 
and what it's going to take to help you get to that place. Not a little incremental uptick in results, but I'm talking monumental, unprecedented, unprecedented breakthrough results. That's how we roll. If we decide to work together, it's because we discern and decide that you have what it takes to create that breakthrough and that you're the right fit and you're the kind of person we can help. And then it's just a matter of seeing if we have the right gel, the right connection, the right synergy. And if we do, we can make some massive breakthrough results happen. And if we don't, you leave the call with massive clarity. Either way, you're going to leave the call with value and we're going to have some fun. Cool? All right, guys. So I invite you to get with us if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Again, my name is Doran Aldana, the Mortgage Marketing Coach from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. You are listening or watching the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Now go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action in the form of confidence and passion and determination. And you, my friend, will get massive results. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for watching and listening. I appreciate you. I love you. Bring your best, be your best, and you will get the best. Peace. Thanks for hanging with me.